Today, we'll attempt to explore the vastness of the universe and reach its boundaries. Asking how big the universe is, is a vast question. Okay, it's big, but how big? Let's start by defining our topic. Well, literally everything. But first, let's focus on what we can actually see. And here's where it starts to get weird, because we have to distinguish between the universe as a whole and the observable universe, which is the currently visible part of our universe and includes all regions of space whose light has had time to reach us since its birth, since the Big Bang. Inside this sphere centered on Earth is the entirety of the visible universe, and at the edges are the oldest things we can observe. The farthest parts of the universe that we can currently see and whose light began to travel towards us shortly after the universe began, nearly 13.7 billion years ago. Everything that lies beyond, beyond this limit called the cosmic horizon, has not yet had time to send us its light. This insurmountable horizon is simply the limit of our current view. A limit that recedes as the universe ages. Every passing second, our observable universe expands by one light second, revealing a little more of the universe as a whole to us. But what is the size of the visible universe? How far are the edges of this image from us? Intuitively, one might think that the size of this sphere is linked to the age of our universe and therefore imagine that the limits of what we can see are 13.7 billion light years away from us. When you think about it, it's obvious. It's impossible to see the universe before it began. And given that by definition, light hasn't had more time to travel than the age of what it's moving through, except that where it gets sneaky is that this way of thinking assumes that the universe is static and that the distances between the objects in it don't change over time. However, this is very, very far from being the case. The furthest things we've been able to observe, which are located at the edges of this sphere, are actually 46.5 billion light years away from us. There's room, you know. In other words, the radius of our observable universe is nearly three times larger than the age of the universe would suggest. And if the extent of the bubble we can see is so vast today, it's because the universe is, and has always been, expanding, and not just a little. Currently, galaxies located at one MPC from us are moving away at 70 kilometers per second, those at two MPC at 140 kilometers per second, those at three MPC at 210 kilometers per second, and so on. Each MPC is an additional 252,000 kilometers that separate us each hour. To these already considerable escape speeds is added the fact that in the past, the universe was expanding much, much faster than it is today. And that's why our visible universe, which encapsulates all the light that has had time to reach us since the Big Bang, is now 93 billion light years in diameter. It's big. And one might wonder how regions located in such distant confines of the cosmos can be visible if the light that left them 13.7 billion years ago has since the Big Bang only been able to travel 13.7 billion light years in distance. The reason is that by having moved back at the time when the light that reaches us today left them, the objects, the galaxies that are here were much closer to us than they are now. And this expansion of space has another consequence, one of the most destabilizing. Even today, beyond a certain distance, the galaxies of our observable universe are moving away from us at a speed greater than the speed of light. Knowing that nothing in the universe can move faster than light does in a vacuum, this may seem counterintuitive, and it totally is. To understand this strangeness, keep in mind that this speed is not that of objects moving through space, but the speed at which they are moving away from us due to the expansion of space itself, which separates, extends, and stretches them like an elastic fabric would. In other words, it's the space on which the galaxies rest that swells and inflates, carrying everything it contains in its growth process. And where it gets even stranger is that the fact that light has a finite speed and that the expansion of space exceeds a certain distance between two objects implies that the volume of our observable universe is not that of the potentially accessible universe. Hang on, stay with me. There is a part within it with which we will never be able to interact. And the volume of this portion of the universe that is already and forever unreachable to us is much smaller than that of the visible universe. This inaccessible begins beyond a limit called the cosmic event horizon, 
which is today located some 16 billion light years away from us. And everything that lies beyond this horizon is forever out of reach. Even if you had a hypothetical ship capable of traveling at the speed of light to try to get there, all objects that are currently outside of this sphere will never be seen as they are now for all eternity. Their present is and will remain undetectable. What is currently happening behind this insurmountable border will never be known to us. And this, even if we could wait for an eternity. Because the photons that now stretch the galaxies that are there are already moving at the maximum speed allowed by the laws of nature. However, due to the expansion of space, the distance separating us from parts of the universe located beyond the horizon of cosmic events increases much more rapidly than the speed of light. Light which, therefore, is not able to counterbalance the stretching of space that opposes its movement and, in a way, starts to retreat from us like swimmers, unable to fight against the force of the current, forced to follow the movement of the space-time conveyor belt. Of course, for billions of years to come, light from galaxies currently behind this border will continue to reach us because the photons that left them before they crossed this sort of red line are now making their way towards us. But those that left after this limit was crossed will never reach us. Thus, the vast majority of galaxies that populate our sky today have in fact already passed beyond this event horizon and their present, the current state of these objects now, is lost to us forever. That's why in an expanding universe, and ours is, the deep sky is set over the coming billions of years to gradually empty of all light, moving too fast, too far, more and more galaxies will end up visually disappearing over time. It is estimated that thus some 20,000 stars of the deep sky pass on average every second beyond the horizon of cosmic events. And since the expansion of the universe is accelerating, in the end, only the galaxies of our local group will be visible to us, which are anchored on the smallest scales by the force of gravity that overcomes the expansion of the universe. Perhaps even stranger, and here we'll have to hang on, is that this horizon of cosmic events is further away than the limit beyond which objects are hurtling away from us faster than light. I'm going to repeat that in a different way for you and also a bit for me. Contrary to what our brain intuitively screams at us to think, the horizon of cosmic events does not precisely correspond to the limit beyond which the recession speed of galaxies exceeds that of light. Because this limit, drawn by the surface of the Hubble sphere, is currently located about 14.3 billion light years from here. And where it gets extremely weird, okay, it already was, is that all the galaxies that are in this region of space and yet are moving away from us at a pace faster than the speed of light will one day be visible as they are today. I repeat, all the galaxies that are here are currently moving faster than light relative to us. And yet the photons they're emitting now will be able to reach us. And to understand why, we're going to have to add a few more knots to our brains. In fact, even though the expansion of the universe is indeed accelerating, where it becomes doubly counterintuitive is that this rate of expansion is, let's say, currently not fast enough to maintain a Hubble sphere of constant size so that it dilates, it grows over time. And this, faster than the light emitted now, by the galaxies located in these regions, is receding. I warned you about the knots. Thus, this sphere will continue, in a way, to catch up with all these fleeing points. And once entered into the Hubble sphere, the grains of light will then find themselves in a region of space receding from us slower than the speed of light, and thus move forward, be able to progress towards us. In fact, because of this strange phenomenon, we think that all the photons that reach us from the first five billion years of our universe were all emitted in regions of space that were already moving relative to us faster than light. All the objects on which these photons are obviously today have gone beyond the event horizon. But their light, although emitted at a time when they had a superluminal speed relative to us, had time to reach us. Thus, the area between the limits of the Hubble sphere and the event horizon is a part of the observable universe, said to be non-causally disconnected, which we will be able to see in a distant future as it is now, but already moving faster than light relative to us. 
Now that we know how to twist the back of the skull with the part of the universe that we can see, it's time to tackle its entirety. For although the observable universe may seem immeasurably large, it is quite possible that its size is insignificant compared to the dimensions of the universe as a whole. But before we wade into the heart of the matter, let's ask ourselves what we would see if suddenly the universe froze in its expansion and we started to travel through a static space until we filled the 46 and a half billion years that separate us from the edges of the image. Or more simply, if by some miracle, we could instantly teleport ourselves to the level of the cosmic horizon. What thick mystery lies beyond the edges of the observable universe? Well, most certainly, more universe. Billions of galaxies and stars that we cannot see today because the light they emitted has not had time to reach us. In fact, if you could get here, you would only be moving the center of your observable universe as it is always relative to your position in the total universe. Finding yourself on the edge of the frame, you could see another portion of the picture and observe the region where our galaxy is as it was 13.7 billion years ago, because it would then be for you at the level of your new cosmic horizon. And at the same time, you will discover what the edges of the cosmos look like for us now. In short, each point in space has its own field of view and a hypothetical extraterrestrial civilization. Living in the Andromeda galaxy, located two and a half million light years away, simply has an observable universe as vast as ours, exactly the same radius, but slightly off center from us. That's why going to one of the edges is to transform it into the center and most certainly notice that, damn, it continues all around. But if, beyond the edges of the image, the universe is much, much, much larger than what we can currently see, do we have only an idea of its size? Well, in a sense, yes, because we have clues that are sometimes more complicated to follow than the arms of an octopus that you would face in a slapping contest. But to keep it simple, let's say that the extent existing beyond the cosmological horizon depends on the curvature of space, its geometry. When we observe the universe at very large scales, it seems that the geometry of space has a flat shape. However, if the universe as a whole is perfectly flat, then the observable universe is just a drop in an ocean of space-time, of literally infinite extent. And beyond these limits, the universe continues, over and over, indefinitely. Except that something that seems flat to us at small scales can actually be very slightly curved. Laid on the surface of the ocean, the horizon seems flat to you because the extent of the landscape that you can embrace at a glance is derisory compared to the size of the object on which you are laid. And we can clearly see here that what seems flat on a small scale can be immense and very, very slightly curved. Thus, if our universe taken as a whole is extraordinarily larger than the part we can see, then its curvature becomes very difficult for us to measure. Therefore, we cannot be certain that the universe as a whole has a perfectly flat geometry, as it is possible that it has a curvature so slight that it cannot be measured. In other words, this gigantic observable universe, with its 93 billion light years in diameter, might well be too small compared to the size of the entire universe for us to measure its curvature, even if it is finite. Let's assume it is slightly curved. In this case, the universe is infinite and considered closed. So what would its size be? Well, if we stick to the maximum curvatures allowed by our measurements, the universe as a whole would be at least 250 times larger than the observable universe. But that's the lowest possible estimate. And by giving space a ridiculously negligible curvature, it could just as well have a volume 15 million times greater than what we can see. Yeah, that's big. In short, we don't know exactly, infinite maybe, finite possibly, but at least 250 times larger than what is offered to our view. And just to give us another knot in the skull, I would like to go back to the hypothesis of a flat universe and therefore infinite. Consider that if the universe as a whole is limitless, then it was already at the beginning. So when we talk about the Big Bang, this moment where all the matter of the universe was compressed into a tiny little portion of space-time, our mind tends to represent something extremely small and compressed. But if the universe is infinite today, and it maybe is, then it has always been, even during the Big Bang. 
where in those distant times, it was simply an infinity that was much smaller than its infinity today. Even when incredibly compressed, the astronomical and astounding dimensions of space can exceed anything that can be imagined. And I personally find it completely crazy that something as small as a human brain, made from small pieces of the universe and being part of it, is capable of estimating its size. And since these 93 billion light years in diameter at least have ended up digging a gaping hole of perplexity in my skull, I think it's high time to go back to living in my 160 square feet. Yeah, actually, I'm already there, you know. The universe is food for the mind. But if you enjoyed this journey, there is a theory that says the size of the wallet somewhat drives the quality and regularity of the projects. And above all, it allows to pay an editor to do things of higher quality than what I have proposed to you. You can also follow me on Instagram. Sometimes I talk about things other than the big mess of the edges there.